What I'm going to do now is look at colour effects. And I used to use colour effects a lot when I was doing landscape photography, and I still use it in my creative imagery. But a couple of tips for you. What you actually can do is use the Nick Collection filters anywhere in your workflow. You could use three to four different filters to get different looks. And that's what I've done. So let's dive in and have a look. We'll go to Filter, Nick Collection 7, and then I'll go to Colour Effects. There's a number of filters in here again. I like to have all on so I can see them. And it's just, you know, I think, oh, I'll go there and I'll try that. Or I have my actual favourites. So, for example, one that I used to use a lot in my landscape, if I wanted to get a bit of a softness, particularly on a seascape, sunrise, I would use the soft focus. One click and it just gives like a, what I call a Gaussian blur effect. Let's come over here. You can play with strength, shadows, highlight, opacity. It gives you a little bit more options than just applying a Gaussian blur on your images within Photoshop. And you could go strong, diffusion, and I've certainly tried those over the days. The other one, let's have a look, that I do like, and it's darken and light and centre. This is putting a vignette on your border. I can go maximum depth if I want that vignette, or I can go brighten edges. And I will use brighten edges on a number of images because if it's a dark scene that I'm creating a composite, I want to get a little bit of lightness on the edging. I still want that vignette to draw in, but I'll add some light on those edges. And it's a way of getting the viewer's eye to bounce around and look for light. The other filter that I like to work with is fog. And also, too, you've got graduated fog. So I'll just come down here and look at fog. And then I'm going to apply a light fog over the image. It's a global adjustment. I could do medium. I can come over here and dial down the intensity if I want. And let's say that I want that across the whole image. I then could go, oh, I don't want it across the whole image. I only want it on the foreground. And that's where you would use Photoshop masks. Let's come down and have a look. I'll choose light and I'll collapse that. Let's go down further and look at graduated fog. Subtle, foreground, and I like to use the foreground sometimes. Again, it's about getting the viewer to shift around. I'm going to drop the opacity just down a little bit. I only want a little hint in there. I can come up here where it's got fog and I can choose the different graduations. Here is two, three, and four. Let's come back up to three and we'll leave it at that now i'm going to go apply and that's going to put that fog across that image let's turn that layer off and on but let's say now i think that's a little bit too much fog or lightness don't think of it as fog it's about a technique incorporating a little bit more light in an area so what I'm going to do is get a mask. I'll make sure I've got my brush. I'll make sure that the foreground is black. I'll leave the opacity at 43. And I'm going to make the brush bigger with the bracket. And I'm just going to drag across that area. And you can see it there on the mask. I'll turn that layer off and on. That's one of my lighting techniques or where I call sculpting the light in. Let's go back up and choose filter and come back into color effects. One I do use a lot more now that I never did when I was in landscape photography and general photography was adding film grain. I'm going to add a fine grain, a medium grain or a soft large grain. Or let's go extreme, and you can see that's got a real, definitely extreme. But I tend to look for more the fine grain. The reason that I'm adding grain is that with the AI imagery, it's a technique that I learnt 
that you just add a little bit of film grain or fine grain into your image just to give it a little bit more of a finer detail within an AI image. And you could do it with noise, but I find coming in here using the fine grain just gives it that nice little bit of supple grain into an image and gives it detail with an AI image, particularly when you're working with a composite. You've got a background that's generated in AI. You may have six to seven elements that you put together. And so I use this more as a finishing touch. I can play here with grain per pixel. I can come up here and change it down to a more of a softer grain. Again, it depending on your style that you want. What you also can do is, and I haven't shown you, is brush. And so let's say that I want to add some fine grain, but I don't want it across the whole image. I'm going to come down, click on brush. It puts a layer in. I've got my brush tool and I can actually brush in some grain just in an area here. You won't see it, but where I did use it was particularly in seascapes and landscapes that I just wanted a little bit of detail in a certain area, particularly if you think about it with the waves coming in onto the foreshore or the sand. I would put a little bit of film grain in that water to give it a little bit more I call crunch. Again, there's a lot more that you can play with with color effects. This was an overview, and it just gives you some of the tools and things that you can play with. It's a fabulous program that I've been using for years, and I'm excited to be in partnership with DxO and Nick Collection. Thank you for watching, and if you like this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe. Have fun being creative.